I would like to welcome you in this forum because this is the forum of the age of experience. An age of experience that actually means that the experiences are becoming the new economic offering of every single economy and every single nation. Experiences because actually the product that we are producing as industry makers are no longer enough because consumers want and buy experiences. And therefore, experiences in everyday life are becoming the new innovation. That is the subject that I would like to discuss you, or if you want to dissert a little bit around, because experience and innovation are two things that are becoming the more and more important in, uh, in the area and in the thinking, if you want, of every single of our industrial partners, so the clients and prospects. I hope that you are numerous today. But especially, I would like to explain you what is the framework of innovation that we have been adopting in the SO system and actually helped us shape our own strategy, first of all, and uh, uh, that we are uh, proud, if you wanted to consult as well our client with, it is what we call experience thinking. Now, why innovation it is uh, at the art, if you want, uh, not only of the SO system, but of every single industry in the world, but simply because uh, if you look around and you hear what the governments the prime ministers, the economists, and I'm sure as well all the business that are sitting today with us is talking about it is innovation as a sort of a magical remedy in order to increase the growth of the GDP worldwide. In this chart, if you want to, you see a little bit just a map, a geolocalization of what are the mega growth initiatives worldwide, independently from the fact that some is adopting uh, something that is bigger, uh, called it like industry 4.0, industry for the futures, uh, or future industries in, in some other case. There are many other keywords that are repeated everywhere that are part of the programmatic economical plan of all the nation that is touching the world of innovating in manufacturing. So I think that what is important is, first of all, to notice that uh, there are recurrences, if you want, in terms of uh, economical plan throughout the world. And it is not the case that every single nation has adopted uh, through the five to 10 years economic plan two major axes, one of, of, of which it is the manufacturing one. Why so? Simply because economists have been finally modeling the fact that the economy that are, uh, I would say, disproportionately uh, higher, if you want, in terms of services, uh, at the expense of manufacturing, which is the case worldwide, actually, uh, they are becoming the less and less, uh, uh, if you want, the richer, meaning that uh, the prosperity index of the population is reduced uh, thanks to the fact uh, that manufacturing is going down. So what does it mean? It means that in order to have an economic balance, all the recipes that we see the government preparing are calling for a better uh, balance between the manufacturing output and the service output. So that is the one very first finding that is respected, I would say, in the recipe of every single government in the world. So if I go through some international example, it is the reason why in India, for example, the whole economic plan, it is being called made in India for the reference to the manufacturing. And that innovation into manufacturing, it is one of the access that they want to follow. Uh, differently from India, there are other uh, quite advanced, I would say, economy, despite being little in terms of the value share that they represent worldwide, like that of Korea, that are very interesting, especially because they are making uh, the access of, yes, innovation is important, yes, manufacturing is important, and what about the, this trend of consumer wanting to buy experiences? And therefore, they have opened a commission that is studying actually how the creative industries and uh, see the creative industry in terms of cinema, advertising, inter entertainment, hotels, as industries that have been growing significantly in uh, the latest 40 de uh, four decades, and uh, despite this, they are not technologically based. So how can we understand and learn from the creative industry in order to recreate this innovation path and acceleration into the manufacturing of goods? That is a very good uh, question, I would say. There is another example that is, for sure, that of America. This is your government. That is just one month ago, the President Obama uh, issued this uh, new uh, the strategy for American innovation. It is the most complete of all the economical plan that have been through 
throughout the 2015. And that is normal because the US, it is the most advanced economy in the world. So I would have been surprised that something wasn't uh, escaped, I would say, to the US uh, committee. So every single government has done uh, a major effort, I would say, to analyze how to innovate in the age of experience. And there is something that uh, it is uh, of uh, interest to me, that is not only those that are looking in the same direction, but those that are looking in how to help industries everywhere they are in the world to understand how to make innovation. Because innovation is not a magic word that actually by adding it to the different soup, it makes uh, by miracle a sort of uh, different results. It needs to be mastered. However, innovation, it is very, very much misunderstood or misinterpreted most of the time. What I found extremely interesting is one of the initiative flagship that is happening in Europe, where a committee of economists, anthropologists, entrepreneurs, and even psychologists, I would say, they have been working together for the last two years in order to analyze how to have a different sense to innovation in this century. That is, uh, if you want, my visualization is for sure. <laughs> it is not how they presented to the European community. But it is my way to tell you in a nutshell what they are, what they are uh, if you want, uh, championing. First, it is uh, an evidence, the fact that technology-driven innovation has been the growth remedy since the Industrial Revolution, and that uh, little by little are becoming eroding, if you want, our economic output rather than helping it. Why so? simply because technology advancement very soon it is, extreme, it is easily copycat by everyone and therefore it is no more a differentiating factor for one economy versus another. And there is a second factor that technology-driven innovation most of the time are extremely expensive. And therefore the sustainability of eco the economic effort that industry needs to do each time to have a leapfrog in terms of technology, it is no more economically viable. Therefore, Elander, they present as a different way of looking at innovation what they call the design-driven innovation and sustaining with all the nations in Europe that that would be the real path to the new centuries and the time ahead of us because the design-driven innovation are a different type of remedy that not necessarily relies just in technological innovation. Let me tell you immediately that design, it is not intended in the sense of drawing or styling, it is design in the true acception, the word that is coming from Latin, that is designare. And when you designate, that exists in English as well, something, it means that you give a signification, a specific meaning to an object. To make it clear for everyone, think to the famous siphon, the famous siphon that didn't make any technological innovation in the strict sense of the world, but they actually changed the meaning of the object, no more than a communication device, but an entertainment device. That is the meaning of design driven innovation. What this commission has done is analyzed the industry throughout the world in the past 15 years, actually. So here I'm showing what I can show. Uh, that is the part that the European Commission has made public. And in this ladder, what uh, you, you will see, if I put all the numbers, is that uh, there is just a 15% only of global industries that are adopting design as a strategy. The majority still of the industry are interpreting design as either a style or a process to produce something, but very few are understanding the meaning of using design as a strategy. What does it mean, design as a strategy? I think that especially those that are coming from the industry here from US are pretty, uh, I would say, skilled in understanding that when we create a product, actually we do first think in terms of what is the final experience that we want to deliver, and therefore then we need to make a sort of reverse engineering in order to understand what, to the, what is the product that needs to be created. That is what I call the product experience design, and it is not new. That is exactly what we were doing already 20 years ago. And that is, the majority of the time, the only interpretation that an industry has of adopting design as a strategy. 
I don't just create, if you want, a product in terms of having an incremental features into my product. I look for what is the ultimate consumers or user that is, would like to have in terms of experience, and then I design back. It is the design back from store, the design back from the experience, and all these type of things and wording that probably you may have heard. Now, the difference is that today, designing a product experience is not a novelty. Every single person, and it's not just a designer, but every single entrepreneur knows that when you need to create a new product, you need to start from the ultimate experience that you want to deliver. However, because the product is no longer enough to differentiate yourself, and it is impossible to continue doing just super duper, I would say, technological breakthrough each time that we need to want to create, if you want a competitive advantage, something else or something needs, different needs to be done. And this is what I call the holistic experience. What do I mean by holistic experience? It means that our way of thinking in terms of innovation needs to pass from the usual flow that it is used, that is called the design thinking, into what I call the experience thinking. And experience thinking is much larger than just the product. That is all the meaning of the experience thinking. When you think in terms of experiences, you don't have just to think in terms of what is the next product that I'm going to offer into my portfolio. It is actually a matter of ensuring that every single piece, part, mix, if you want, of your element, of your recipe, it actually creates an experience that is differentiating your company from that of a competitor. Therefore, what we are looking at in this uh, simple visualization, it is something that actually touches all the major, if you want, uh, uh, step of a consumer journey, as simple as that. So the product experience, when it relates to the whole consumer journey, it becomes an experience thinking, and it needs to be created in a way that actually embraces the whole rather than just one part. What do I mean by this? It means that the real innovation challenge doesn't lie anymore just in the product innovation, but this actually is the long and hard work that needs to be done by several disciplines in, in, in a company, and not just by the officially, if you want, uh, <coughs> assumed to do an innovation that is, in the majority of the case, the R&D department, because innovation starts from ideas and ideas come from everywhere. The instantiation of the ideas through a consumer journey, including, if you want, the part of the product, is what can become the real recipe that is going to change the game of my company versus that of my competitor. So that is exactly what has happened if you wanted the so system. Five years ago, we have adopted our own framework, if you want, just to experiment it by ourselves, because we do like to test before selling. And therefore, what we have done is that we applied our framework to, uh, to the uh, DASO system, if you want, elements. And it is how we arrived, if you want, to rethink to our strategic target to the brand equity of the so system, moving from being a 3D PLM company into a 3D experience company, embracing much more than just the product development, but a place or a way and a methodology, if you want, to innovate at every single level of the consumer journey for our client and for ourselves. That is the results of what we have done. By using the experience thinking, we have repositioned completely the way of doing, the way of thinking at the so system. Each of us has become, if you want, an innovator in the DNA, in the sense that each of us is capable of doing proposal, working in a collaborative way through our own product. So that is what has been done. We have recreated everything in the whole consumer journey. We have innovated at the level of the product as well, and not solely at the level of the product. But the 3D experience platform was the result of this journey that we made internally. And everything got changed from the portfolio that was swapped from list of product to industry solution experience to the values that we can, are capable to create today thinking to the value for yourself and to the value that you want to deliver to your consumer to provide you with a solution that actually helps you making your innovation inside uh, uh, your company. So 
If I go through uh, the summary of what I'm doing uh, here is that uh, I'm trying to explain that uh, expedient thinking is not uh, just another, uh, I would say, buzzword, but it is a real methodology, actually, that gets instantiated through the 3D experience platform, because that is the main purpose why we are doing this. We think, so we have idea, everyone has idea, but the moment is the difference between an idea and the moment that you know that this idea is sustainable and is actually creating a value for the ultimate consumer and it is economically viable, needs to be tested, simulated, created, designed. So the difference between designing a product and designing an experience needs to have a home base which is different from a regular IT system and that is what the 3D experience stands for does, the solution is that the business innovation actually becomes just a result of this rather than being the first objective. I would like to conclude on the part of the experience thinking by telling you that whatever we are doing, it is with this purpose in mind and especially to a secondary purpose that is that of helping you going towards your own journey coming from an idea of innovation that is basically only related to product and therefore you have a lot of legacy system that actually has helped you throughout the life of your company doing this into the new era that is the era of the experience uh, platform and therefore we are creating the major shortcut for all of you in order to arrive to this era. That is the novelty of the releases that we have done in 2015, where we have added, uh, if you want, what we call the power buy, and this is an advertising license that I'm taking here to short it cut, but it means powered buy. And the power buy capability is actually helping everyone, actually, not to throw away whatever you have, but actually using the 3D experience platform to browse and recuperate the key data key information, key models, and actually visualize it in the context of the 3D experience platform that provides numerous online services that are wanted to be collaborative, social, for the open innovation within your company and outside, which is the reason why the 3D experience platform can help you whether you are using legacy system as that of the SO system, call it the CATIA V5 of the situation, of the SOLIDWORKS of the situation, but as well that of competitors, because I love my competitors. So let me show you one short video to, tell, to, show you, to demonstrate to you what are these capabilities. I think that with this release, what we wanted to operate is to make up all the mechanical engineers that were so in love still with, uh, with the, our own portfolio, the, 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 the past portfolio. And, uh, but I'm working hard as well to make up all the other engineers that are not mechanical engineers, but that are bioengineers, chemical engineers, and even marketers. 
That is, uh, if you want uh, a, a screenshot, uh, just to tell you that uh, throughout the acquisition that we have made uh, in the past uh, one year and a half, actually two years, the portfolio of the SO system is really complete today. I pretend to have the best portfolio that is uh, on, uh, on, uh, on the planet, and especially uh, because all our acquisition actually and all the products of our acquired company that today are becoming the, the brands, it is uh, uh, immediately available to everyone, especially through the platform, thanks to the 3D, uh, to the power by capabilities. So you see how we have restructured the portfolio given by the capabilities on, that we bought on manufacturing, especially in the operation management and in logistic and supply chain with the Prism Quintic. The Acceleris now by Yovia, that has been extremely important. Today we have announced that uh, three new solutions that you will see later on, especially in the uh, industry theater of, uh, of life science. These are all things that are extremely important because innovation, it is something that is becoming the less and less through the borders of the industry. Today, you cannot make a car if you don't do material science. And uh, tomorrow, you cannot make not even a pill unless you you have uh, a lean production uh, alla Toyota. So I think that the, the industry fertilization is the more and more important in this age because we are in the age of experience. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.